Vector versus raster. The debate continues. I've always wanted to say that. Image editors and illustration software are the two primary categories of graphic software. While there are a lot of subcategories, most applications fall into one or the other of the two categories of vector and bitmap. We had this discussion earlier. Photoshop lives and dies by that resolution number. It is what we would define as a resolution dependent program. You must be able to grasp the concept of resolution. I know most of you have, but if you can't, you will never be successful with this program in producing quality images. Now again, we had this conversation before, but if you're working, for example, in PowerPoint, PDF documents viewed on a monitor, television screens, web graphics, your resolution will be somewhere between 72 and 96. Some will go as far as to say 72 to 100 pixels per linear inch. If you're going out to press, the magic bullet number, if you will, is 300 PPI. PPI again, pixels per inch. Let's just go back to the one at 72. Pretty standard number. If you have an image that has 72 pixels per linear inch, that's not a square inch. That means every square inch in your image will have 5,184, 72 times 72. If you have an image that's 5 by 5 inches, that's 25 square inches, the number of pixels would be 129,600. Well, that may seem like a lot. If you try to print something with this resolution, it's not going to work because your eyes will resolve the pixels that are in the image. They'll be able to see them. We get to a point with our eyes where we don't resolve them anymore and we see a photograph, and that's what we want. 300 is the magic number to press, 72 to 96 for everything else. We've already covered that part. Let me do this. Let me go ahead and turn these off. There are four terms I want to bring up, and I think they're very important because they relate to information within a resolution-dependent image, the pixels. The first one is the one we just saw, PPI, pixels per inch. That represents the physical information that you're working with in Photoshop. If an image has a resolution of 72 PPI, you can then go up to the word image, image size, and the number and the resolution should be 72. It's a term we've used for years and years and years, pixels per inch. The next one, which is I think the one that we use for everything, DPI. Oh, this has a DPI of this and this has a DPI of that. DPI is for output. We're talking inkjet, laser printer kind of stuff. Think of it this way. Every pixel in this image you blow it up, you can see the actual pixels. Every one of those pixels is a color. Those colors on a 24-bit image can equal 16.7 million possible values. Inkjet printers don't have 16.7 million colors. They have three, four, six. Basically, they've got the standard CMYK, RGB. They have to mix the colors. So although every one of these little tiny dots is a color within a range of 16.7 million, in order for that same color to be reproduced on a printer, you have to mix inks. So the printer overlaps dots, mixing the inks so our eyes see other colors. Dots per inch. A normal inkjet printer will have a DPI of 1,400 or higher. You say, well, okay, then that means when I save my images to print, I need to save them at 1,400 because that's what that printer can do. It has nothing to do with that. They're different numbers. Stick to the 300 magic bullet for output, you're going to be fine. But DPI is for output, things like printers, inkjets, lasers. The next one, LPI, lines per inch. If you work in the four-color industry, you already know this one. It's the number of lines per inch on the plates that produce the four colors that produce the image and mix the inks. Those numbers are typically low, 120, 130, 140, somewhere around that general area. All four plates then combine together to produce the image, LPI. This is the one I've been moving toward, and this is the one I want you to really understand if it's used correctly, SPI, samples per inch. That number, if you know it, is gold. That value, if used correctly, samples per inch, lets you know exactly the number it was captured at, that image. For example, if you have a SPI on a photograph of 300 and it's a scanned image, that means it was scanned at 300. 
Images can have an SPI of 300 and a PPI of 600. How? It was scanned at 300, you brought it into Photoshop and bumped it up to 600. If that's true, then you don't really have an image that's at 600. The 300 is the golden number. Whatever it is, if you know the SPI of an image, especially in scanning, then you know what it was created at. Typically, you don't want to change that number if you have SPI. So PPI, monitor, television stuff, DPI, output, inkjets, lasers, LPI, four-color press kind of stuff, SPI, samples per inch, is the magic number because that number is the number it was actually captured at.